that wasn't super easy. What was your favorite costume from Black Panther Wakanda Forever? And why was it that costume designer Ruth Carter had to make three times as many pieces for this movie? Let's dive in. We save a lot of fabric in that costume. <laughs> Number one, it's time for a new super suit. Costume designer Ruth Carter told Vanity Fair that she knew redesigning the Black Panther suit would be a challenge. That process was new to me. But it was one that director Ryan Coogler encouraged her to take on, saying, Whenever I see a Batman film, the suit is different. The suit is new. It's still Batman, but there's this fresh new thing that's being presented. That's what he wanted me to bring to the Black Panther film. Carter put plenty of thought into Black Panther's new look and took inspiration from the fact that she saw this as a woman's story. This fabulous new suit comes with silver and gold embellishments that turn it into, in Carter's words, a panther suit fit for a princess. I saw so many beautiful ways that we could represent it on this costume. Number two, a true warrior dresses the part. Black Panther Wakanda Forever gives us more of a glimpse into Okoye's fashion sense when she visits Shuri at MIT, and this look definitely makes a statement. Wearing a pair of Louis Vuitton sunglasses along with a bold red bodysuit with a uniquely Wakandan design along the front, this look is far from just eye candy. Okoye's red bodysuit is courtesy of Adidas, and it was made using body banding that athletes like because it supports their knees and muscles. This means Okoye is still able to do everything a general of the Dora Milaje would need to, all while looking great. I like it! Number 3. How many costumes do you think were in this movie? Ruth Carter guessed she'd made 700 pieces for Black Panther. But this time around, she made three times as many with an estimated 2100. She explained this by pointing out that she had not only all of Wakanda to style, but the newly introduced kingdom of Talokan and the Wakanda Navy in this movie as well. And with so many great pieces to choose from, which one is Carter's favorite? Well, apparently all of them. I would go up to each one like privately and say, this is my favorite costume. <laughs> Number four, would you wear 3D printed clothes? We are creating costumes with 3D printing. Five 3D printers were used in the making of this movie's wardrobe, and Ruth Carter has praised the process by saying that you can make lightweight pieces much easier by it. Carter got the idea for Shuri's white funeral hood upon seeing 3D printed hoods being modeled at a fashion show in Rome, telling Vanity Fair, I just had to have that. Even Letitia Wright's elephant tusk earrings were 3D printed so that they represented what would be ivory, even though they're not ivory. Rather, Carter wanted these earrings to be more of an homage to the continent. Number five, dressing for the water was the hardest part. Ruth Carter admitted that she struggled finding just the right fabric that would float without causing major wardrobe malfunctions. You want it to look like ballet, but it usually just goes up straight. Weights and tethers were added to fix the problem, but Carter still had a challenge ahead. The costumes for Black Panther had mostly been made using leather and other fabrics that would get destroyed in the water, and so for the sequel, Carter needed to recreate everything from scratch using silicone. I love that costume uh, with the cape and everything. Number six, be prepared. This scene might make you cry. Black Panther Wakanda Forever opens up on T'Challa's funeral, where we see a Wakandan united entirely in white. Ruth Carter told W Magazine, We spoke with historians in West Africa specifically, and they told us that in Africa, the color for funerals is usually white or red. Carter felt that red already had enough of a presence in the first movie, and so she opted for all white. Our film takes a deep dive into the wonderful world that they created. Number seven, Namor could have looked entirely different. If Tenoch Huerta had his way, he would have been wearing a full suit. I asked for, for a whole suit, you know, with muscles. In fact, he wasn't happy when he found out how revealing his costume was. I called them the shame shorts. But fortunately for Huerta, the shame shorts weren't the only part to his outfit. For the leader of the Talokan, Ruth Carter drew heavy Mayan influence, especially on Namor's neck piece, inspired by a pyramid in Mexico dedicated to the feathered serpent. His jade earring and conch shells represent water. Meanwhile, multiple versions of his feathered headdress needed to be made, some silicone-based for use in water and some for use outside of it. They did it so well. Number 8. The future is now. 
Ruth Carter worked with Adidas and the School for Experimental Education and Design to update Shuri's wardrobe for the sequel. Her hollowed out sneakers come courtesy of Adidas. And as awesome as these are, they're nothing compared to Shuri's Adidas tracksuit. This number comes complete with an extra piece of fabric in the back that billows out like a cape when Shuri's on her motorcycle. Director Ryan Coogler warned Carter that he didn't want to focus as much on the clothing for this movie, and that the wardrobe should reflect the somber mood of the film. And so, for the tracksuit's color... We wanted it to be the royal color purple. Number 9. How well do you know your Mayan history? When Shuri is taken by the Talokan, the ceremonial dress she's given to wear draws heavy influence from Mayan history, and, of all things, pottery. As Ruth Carter explained to the Times, the Mayans used a lot of sheer fabric, so the dress is sheer to reflect that culture. The Mayans were also the inventors of rubber, meaning that Carter had an easy list of materials to turn to in making this dress. The neck piece is made using clay beads, and Carter has said that she drew plenty of inspiration from Mayan vases that depicted rulers and people of nobility. Number 10. You can't help but notice this queen. While most world leaders would probably go to a meeting of the United Nations in a boring old suit, she shows up wearing an elegant purple gown to represent how, in Carter's words, because of T'Challa's death, she is now both the queen and the king. The crown Angela Bassett wears in this scene was styled based on Isi Sholo, which is a Zulu married woman's hat. The crown was also 3D printed to also represented new innovations. Number 11. This is a bold new look for her. Nakia mostly wore green throughout the first movie to represent her as a member of the River Tribe, but Ruth Carter wanted to shake things up a bit in the sequel. Here, she's introduced wearing a salmon dress, which Lupita Nyong'o has described by saying, this look was hard to finalize. Apparently, the dress needed to be both flattering and practical, while the color needed to stand strong against the natural greens in the background. Number 12. We had to see her in green eventually. Nakia returns to her trademark color for her submersible suit, which Ruth Carter has said was inspired by South African body painters. And Lupita Nyong'o has praised the costume for its celebration of African culture. I'm deeply proud. Carter revealed that the suit was first designed entirely in white, before being painted with tribal lines and scanned into the computer. Bioluminescent paint was added to the front, just so the suit can shine a little more underwater. Number 13. There was a lot to consider during filming. The Jabari are supposed to wear wood armor, but Ruth Carter didn't want to dress the actors in something so hard and heavy, considering they were going to be doing stunt work. So, instead, the breastplate of M'Baku's armor was sculpted from clay, before being cast and painted to resemble wood. From there, Carter faced a second problem, making the costume heavy enough so that it wouldn't float in water. To add to it, Carter decided to think Roman Gladiator, adding a raffia skirt and sandals so that Winston Duke could actually perform underwater. It's clear that the costume department for Black Panther put plenty of thought into creating costumes that felt both authentic and futuristic. Which look blew you away the most? Make sure to let us know down in the comments.